Good day everyone. Once again, you are at Prayer Watch, our weekly appointment with the Word of God and our introduction to prayer. Thank you for joining us today. Let us begin with a word of prayer. O oh, gracious and loving Father in heaven, great and wonderful are you, marvelous are your works, great is your love, amazing is your mercy and your grace towards us, your children. We thank you, Lord, that another day has come for us to meet and to listen to your words, to be changed from the heart by the power of your Holy Spirit. We will again walk with Jesus in the journey of his last days here on earth. And we pray, O oh Lord, that we will be able to receive his message and his love for us. Help us to receive your word with joy and to retain it. Allow your words to dwell in our hearts, not only for now, not only for a short brief time, but for the rest of our lives. May we glorify you, Lord, in the hearing, in the meditating, and in the application of your word. In Jesus' name, Amen. Matthew 18 If your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault just between the two of you. If they listen to you, you have won them over. But if they will not listen, take one or two others along, so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. And if they refuse to listen even to the church, treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. From our reading today, from the Gospel of Matthew, we will see that discipline among believers is important and that the process of dealing with a believer's sin as taught by Jesus Christ gives solid divine principles for our churches today. We will notice that at the time of this teaching, the church was not yet visibly established, but we could very well say that the apostles were already being groomed by Jesus Christ to exercise authority over the nascent church that would be birthed as a result of Jesus' resurrection. As Ephesians 2.20 says, the household believers, the household of believers are built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets uh, with Jesus Christ himself as the chief cornerstone. And so we see that indeed the uh, birth of the church was um, initiated and was guided by the teachings of the apostles. And so when we encounter Jesus' reference to the church, uh, particularly in verse 17 of uh, chapter 18 of Matthew, where it says, tell it to the church, we know that these teachings were given by Jesus to serve as principles for the practice of discipline in the household of faith that was yet to emerge soon. What we see clearly outlined by our Lord Jesus Christ, the head of our church, the church universal, which is his body, is the process by which a believer who sins against a brother or sister, another believer, should be dealt with. Now, three principles are evident here in uh, our church life. First, sin must be dealt with between the parties involved. That is the first step. Ang kasalanan ay kailangang maisaayos sa mga nasasangkot. No? Second, 
There is a process for disciplining the believer who sins. May proseso sa pagdidisiplina sa nagkasala. And third, the goal of discipline is repentance and restoration. Ang layunin sa, po, sa dulo ng pagdidisiplina ay ang pagsisisi sa kasalanan at panunumbalik sa mabuting relasyon sa Diyos at sa kapwa. Now, Jesus laid the principle of the divine law of righteousness, which is the guiding light of every believer. As Jesus taught, Be ye holy as your Father in heaven is holy. And so as believers and followers of Jesus Christ, we ought to accept and appreciate the value of discipline in helping us uphold God's law of righteousness. Kailanman ay hindi na alis ang batas ng uh, katarungan at ng katwiran na siyang uh, pundasyon ng mga batas ng ating Panginoon. At uh, ito ay dapat na um, sinusunod ng bawat mananampalataya. As 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, correcting, rebuking, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God will be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And uh, sa pagtuturo, ang pagwasto, ang pagsaway, at ang pagsasanay sa kabutihan ay bahagi ng ating pananampalataya. Patuloy ang pagbabago na ginaganawa ng Diyos sa ating buhay bilang mga makasalanang binago at binabago pa rin ng Panginoon. Now, while the first principle has to do with God's righteousness and justice, that discipline is important, the second reflects the grace and compassion of God. You see, we can see the element of grace and compassion in uh, the second principle, which is the process by which the offender is brought to repentance. The offender is given every opportunity and uh, to um, be able to realize his sin. He is also given respect. There is sober search for the truths and facts, and there is a lot of listening to one another in love. Makikita natin na sa proseso na inilaan, inilatag ng ating Panginoong Jesus, ay naaaninag nakikita natin na ito ay punong-puno ng uh, kabutihang loob. No? Grace and uh, compassion, malasakit at pag-ibig. And the third principle is a combination of righteousness and mercy. It says here, the sinner, so that the sinner may be brought to repentance that paves the way for his restoration. Restoration of his relationship with God and the person he has offended. And perhaps even the restoration of the church as a whole. Uh, maganda ang nangyayari kapag may magandang proseso at pag nadidisiplina tayo sa ating mga kasalanan hindi po ba? Diyan natin nararanasan ang kaliwanagan, kapayapaan no? at isang pagkakataon na magsimula muli there is what we call a closure to things that may have uh, caused rifts between us even brothers and sisters in Christ. Now, knowing the value of these principles, I believe that we who are members of our respective local churches will appreciate the necessity of discipline in dealing with sins between brothers and sisters in Christ. Now, those are the principles, the process. There is a... Um, four-step process that we see here laid down by our Lord. The first three seem simple 
until we get to the last step where there may be a variety of interpretations. Now, this process that Jesus taught us is applicable where a believer sins against another believer. Perhaps we can think of these sins as those that have to do with slander. Kapag mayroong mga masasamang mga bagay na ikaw ay pinagbintangan ka o masamang mga bagay na sinabi sa iyo, pinagkalat, falsification of documents, or maybe any other sin of deception, there may be theft involved. We know that there can even be um, uh, grave, other grave sins between brothers and sisters in Christ in the church. But uh, let's go to the first uh, process or the first step. Point out the fault privately. Tapatin ang nagkasala ng personal. If you are the person involved, if you are the offended, okay, and you believe that uh, there has been no resolution, there has been no uh, acceptance or repentance, then do not talk about it or complain to other people who will have a tendency to uh, share this, no? uh, share this complaint or even give so many opinions about it. And before you know it, the whole community or even the whole church has already heard or has uh, become aware of your complaint except the person whom you are complaining about. Do not talk about it to other people. The best way is to confront the person. That is the mature thing and the loving thing to do. If the sinner comes to repentance, then the matter would have been settled. Napakaganda kung sa pag-uusap ay makapag, um, ma, maipahayag mo ang iyong saloobin at marinig naman noong nagkasala sa iyo at siya naman ay um, magkaroon din ng pagsisisi at maintindihan niya kung ano ang iyong dinaramdam. Now the second step or the second level is this. If there is no repentance even after you have talked to the, to the offender, then refer the matter to elders who can help thresh out the issues. Kung hindi maayos sa personal na pag-uusap, isang guni sa mga elders ng simbahan. You see, a third perspective is always helpful. Um, or because of uh, your consultation with other mature members of the church, the truth may be settled or established by witnesses. Sabi nga nila. Sa isang usapin, it is her side, your side, and the right side. No? And uh, when uh, the witnesses can come and uh, give light to what really happened, then this may urge the offender to admit and repent of his sin. You know? So that is the third step. At least, it is still contained. But, uh, that is the second step. But if needed, thirdly, you can elevate the matter to the larger body of believers. Kung hindi pa rin maiayos sa pangalawang uh, hakbang, iakyat ang usapin sa lupon ng mga mananampalataya. Now here, Jesus is affirming the wisdom of the bigger body, the counsel of the Holy Spirit that resides among believers. Sabi nga doon sa isang usapin, isa sa mga unang usapin noon sa Council of Jerusalem, it is good to us and the Holy Spirit. Nandoon ang uh, ang kaalaman at ang magandang uh, kalooban ng banal na espiritu na nanahan sa mas nakalalaki o mas nakadadaming mga kaanib sa iglesia. In principle, well, we, in our church, 
uh, we see this pattern being followed in our polity. We have established and uh, consecrated elders who hold their offices for a certain period of time. We also have uh, the congregation, the larger body, the local church that meets annually or on special occasions in order to uh, agree on, resolve, or decide on important matters. And uh, the voice or the vote of the majority, many times with unanimity, you know, is our confirmation of God's um, plan and uh, decision on that particular issue. And so Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am with them. You know, we as a body of believers come together in the name of Jesus. The one thing, the one purpose that unites us is our faith in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and as the head of the church. And that particular, that one and the supreme reason for being together in the name of Jesus Christ carries with it a, a host of uh, other beliefs. That means to say that we accept His teachings, we submit to His Lordship, and we agree to uh, resolve our issues humbly, submit ourselves to one another in love. And so Jesus said, when you are gathered in my name, in that spirit of uh, unity, in that spirit of love, in that spirit of obedience, in the spirit of faith, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. This means that the church, he was talking to the church, those who are gathered in his name, was given by Jesus the authority and the power to exercise discipline among their own members in accordance with the Bible. Whatever it binds, meaning to say whatever it prohibits, is sanctioned by heaven, by the authority of the head, who is Jesus Christ. And whatever it loses, meaning to say whatever it allows, is also allowed by heaven, is allowed uh, as a delegated authority of Jesus Christ, who is the head of the church. Of course, this, this is all under the assumption that the church is guided by the scriptures. Every member then must respect and uh, recognize the authority of its appointed leaders to implement the teachings and rules in their fellowship according to scriptures. Now, more or less we agree, uh, it is easy to see and understand those verses. Of course, some would say, who is the church? You see, the church started off as a very simple organization and now, of course, it has grown to uh, millions and billions of members across, across the world with their own uh, contexts and in different cultures. And so when you say, tell it to the church, to whom are you going to tell it? Is it going to be your local congregation? Is it going to be uh, the larger denomination where you are involved? Well, uh, first of all, we can say that uh, are we going to resolve issues, each and every issue of uh, members uh, all the way up to the highest level? Or who would be in a position to really uh, make a sound judgment and consider the uh, facts and the truths? But the local church and the congregation who are in a more intimate relationship with their fellow brothers and sisters. Now the last step, which we all hope need not be resorted to, you know, is that if the offender continues to remain unrepentant or denies his or her sin, then Jesus said, treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. Ano mag-ibig sabihin nun na kapag hindi pa rin daw no, tumalima 
ang isang nagkasala at hindi uh, nagkaroon ng solusyon ang pag-uusap at ang uh, sa harapan ng buong uh, uh, kalipunan ay uh, ituring daw na isang pagano o isang hentil at isang tax collector. So, um, well, this means, fourth, if efforts for repentance and reconciliation fails within the church, then do not treat him, the sinner, as a believer who desires fellowship with the church. Kung hindi nais na tumalima sa pangaral at tuntunin ng simbahan, huwag ituring bilang mananampalatayang nais makipag-isa sa iglesia. Isn't it that uh, if this particular step does, still does not uh, resolve the issue, we can say that perhaps the offender really has no commitment or no desire to, um, to submit to the authority of the church. No? And so, according to Jesus, treat him as a pagan or a tax collector. And we say, treat that person or that believer as someone who did, who uh, do not treat him as a believer who is truly committed to fellowship with your church. How did, how were the early uh, Jews, the Jews in Jesus' time, to treat tax collector and pagans? What did he mean? Well, uh, there are some commentaries who say that uh, the, the Jews, in fact, had certain rules that they followed uh, with respect to treating Gentiles or pagans and tax collectors. One of that was not to include them in the religious community or the, the religious fellowship. Was One of them also was, another was that uh, they were not to engage or to come into any intimate relationship with these people although that did not mean that they were to treat them rudely or to um, exclude them from any works of mercy and help now in the christian context of course this also doesn't mean that we show disrespect or we ban them from prayers if they ask for our prayers or ban them from worshiping in the church Although, in fact, some Christian commun communions practice excommunication. No? For those, perhaps th this depends on the gravity of their sin against uh, a fellow believer or even against the church. This doesn't also mean that we do not help them when they are in need or that we do not show them charity. But this can mean that we will... Uh, that they can be barred from holding certain leadership or teaching positions in the church. Of course, this may depend on the gravity of the sin. This, also, this may also mean finding ways of re-educating them in the faith. How do you treat a pagan? Paano ba natin dapat ituring ang isang taong hindi pa mananampalataya, hindi ba tayo ay uh, magpapahayag uli ng gospel. Baka kailangan na turuan uli at i-disciple uli. No? Tungkol sa talagang sinasabi sa Biblia. This may also mean praying. Some more praying for their repentance. In reality, different churches may um, uh, instill discipline in many ways, in different ways. And we know of course that times have changed. Whereas the Sanhedrin of the Jews you know, were hostile to Jesus and definitely they were against the Christian tenets and teachings, Sanhedrin being their court, or even perhaps the court of the Romans or the court of the Gentiles, you know, Gentile state courts. We know that in our time, our state laws nowadays are guided generally by Christian principles and standards of morality so that Christians can refer irreconcilable disputes in the court. Iba na rin ang lagay na ating mga korte ngayon. Marami na ang mga batas. No? Ang mga batas natin ay, yan ay nakabase din sa mga prinsipyo 
ng tamang uh, kaugalian na atin din kinikilala bilang mga Kristiyano. But wherever these conflicts of sin between fellow believers may eventually lead, I think the most important thing for us today, my dear brothers and sisters, is to remember that Jesus Christ taught the importance of upholding the divine law of righteousness among his followers. Not to take sin lightly. To resolve their issues in a sober and truthful way. To use scriptures and biblical principles as guiding light. And to aim for repentance and restoration of the offenders. Only in this way may the church remain truly the salt of the earth, the preserver of that which is good and pleasing in the sight of God and the light of the world. Where there is God-given order, there is the unity of the Holy Spirit in the bond of peace. Ang sabi nga sa ating uh, mga Pilipino, ang nagsasabi ng mat ang nagsasama ng tapat ay nagsasama ng maluwat. No? Um, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as we continue to journey with our Lord Jesus Christ on the way to His passion and death on the cross, this Lenten season, let His words guide us in our life as a church. We are also about to celebrate our anniversary as a local church this coming Sunday. It is significant that before he offered his life on the cross, Jesus left his apostles these spiritual principles to guide them in what was going to be the church. And these guiding principles continue to serve as a rock of uh, ages for us in our own journey of faith. A journey that is not a bed of roses or without any conflicts between and among us. But if we remain faithful to Jesus and humble ourselves before God and one another, then we will be able to admit our sins, accept God's forgiveness, and enjoy the blessing of fellowship with God and with one another. Let us pray. Loving God, Father of us all, thank you, Lord, for your timely message, especially in these times. Thank you for reminding us, O oh God, that Jesus Christ indeed was concerned for his church and he loved the church he knew that in time as he said the church will grow he will build his church the gates of hell will not prevail against it the gates of unrighteousness the gates of pride the gates of sin will not prevail and lord thank you that he said the principles that we just now read. This is the way that he is going to make the church victorious against the onslaught of godlessness, chaos, conflicts, and all sorts of lawlessness. Salamat Panginoon na nakikita namin ang puso ng aming mahal na Panginoon at tagapagligtas. Sa aming po mga pagdadaanan, na pag, mga pagsubok, pati na rin Panginoon sa mga hamon ng aming buhay bilang mga magkakapatid sa isang iglesia, ay matuto po kami na pag-aralan, sundin, at tumalima sa mga prinsipyo na iniwan niya sa amin. Lord, we pray that uh, indeed we individually may learn to humble ourselves, seek the truth, hold on to that which is good, 
and to reject that which is evil in your sight. We pray, Lord, that you will continue to bless us and bless our church, O Lord, with the renewing, life-giving power of your Holy Spirit, because we ask this in the name of our Savior and Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Good day, everyone, and may God bless us as we continue to pray for one another. God bless our church.